All right, good evening. Welcome back to Valhalla High School in the Thunderdome, home of the Norsemen for Grossmont Hills opener tonight between the Helix Highlanders and the Valhalla Norsemen. Tonight is uh, anybody's guess who could win this game. Uh, Helix comes in here, according to East County Sports, is the favorite to win the league. But if you talk to anybody around, uh, you talk anybody around uh, this this area, they'll tell you uh, that this league is wide open and anybody could win. In fact, Valhalla obviously would have, uh, if they have their say, they'll have a chance to win this league as well. Both teams come in here with uh, pretty decent records. Valhalla eight and five and Helix at nine and five. Both have played uh, the tournament circuit. Uh, Valhalla headed out to the desert, out to Las Vegas, where they played some games, and I'm sure Helix played in a couple tournaments too, which is the standard practice here in San Diego County this time of year. But now uh, the Christmas uh, wrappings are all thrown away. The New Year's has been rung in, and now it's time for league play, and that's what we're going to get tonight. You have two teams that uh, historically have been one of the two of the better teams in the Grossmont League over the years. Helix obviously winning their fair share of league titles in just about any sport, so nothing new. So let's get to those starting lineups uh, for both teams as they're being introduced right now. Number three, Titus Young, is uh, the person that was just introduced there. He's a 5'11 senior guard for Helix. He's followed by Romario Wilson. Romario Wilson, six foot three senior forward. Christian Bell, number 21. He's a six foot guard, he's a junior. And the last but not least for the Helix Highlanders tonight is Will Mildenhall, six foot four senior forward. So a little bit of height there, at least according to what the rosters say for Helix. Uh, from this distance, it's hard to verify whether that height is real height or if that's roster height. Now for your Norsemen. Norsemen are going to start some players that you might familiar with if you follow enough uh, Valhalla basketball. Uh, the first one up for Valhalla. And we're waiting for the Brian Anderson, teacher here at Valhalla, to introduce those starters. We'll see who they are. And the first one off the bench tonight is number 12, George Fakuri. And number five, David Gazelle. And number four, Andrew Lazoya. We'll talk a little bit about these guys and what they've contributed over the years. Kevin Mills, a senior. And your last starter is uh, number three, Spencer Havard. East County Defensive Player of the Year in football, and uh, quite a significant contributor to Valhalla's basketball uh, program as well the last few years. He's a three-year starter, excuse me, a three-year player for, for Valhalla in varsity basketball. Uh, definitely been uh, a great contributor to uh, the, the Valhalla and what they've been able to accomplish over the years. Keith Jackson finds himself, I believe, in his sixth season here as head coach for Valhalla. Uh, he brings quite a, a level of experience now to him. Of course, uh, before he came to Helix, he was the head coach over at uh, Patrick Henry Girls Program, very successful over there, and he's been very successful here at Valhalla. Of course, Helix is gonna be in their traditional road greens here tonight, and Valhalla is in their home white, ready, ready to open, off the, open up the Hills League basketball action. That tip ball is gonna go out of bounds, and we will uh, see that it will be Valhalla possession um, and they will get the first possession. Helix comes out in that full press that you're going to see. They're going to try to match their athleticism with Valhalla's athleticism, and uh, we'll see which one uh, breaks first. So breaking the half-court set, Lazoya for three right off the bat, and that's going to be a missed shot opportunity for Lazoya. Kick out to the wing, and uh, that shot is no good. Put back up by number 35 for Helix. And Bahala is back on the run. Nice fake there by Spencer Havard. Spencer Havard takes it himself. And right off the bat, Spencer Havard gets two points. And so does the Norseman. 2-0. Norseman on top. A little bit of a trap action there. Helix is going to drive to the basket. He's going to draw the foul. There's going to be no basket, though. Romario Wilson is going to draw the foul. But he will not basket will not count. That foul is going to be on number five. Excuse me, number four, Andrew Lazoya, and that will be his first foul of the evening. 
So Helix in the half court set. Valhalla also in man defense, something you'll see a lot of this year with the Norsemen. Very athletic team. We've got a couple players who've played considerable minutes over the last few years. Nice drive to the basket. And that one, uh, Romario Wilson does get to go. And Helix ties this game up. 6.46 left to go in this first quarter. Both teams tied. Both teams predicted to do well in the Grossmont Hills League this year. Both teams similar records. John Singer, the longtime head coach of Helix, feels like he's got a good team. I'm sure he does. A lot of athletes over there. A lot of history of winning. Spencer Havard from somewhere near uh, downtown San Diego, and he gets that one to go. It's 5-2, to two, and a uh, pretty confident shot as well as he should be. He's done a lot of those over the years, and Helix is up 5-2. to two. Pass inside. Lazoya, nice recovery defense there. Good putback, but it's a missed shot. Spencer Havard on the rebound. Looks like that ankle's uh, feeling pretty good for Spencer. He told me today he had some acupuncture. For those of you who don't know, as Andrew Lazoya also fires one up from pretty deep. Uh, Spencer Havard has been battling some ankle problems. He heard it right away in Vegas and uh, is unable to play. A couple missed shots there. Gazelle keeps that ball in play. Nice ball fake by Havard, and he's going to put that one up. That's a missed shot. Rebound there by Christian Bell, and here comes your Highlanders. Down five to two with five and a half left to go in the first quarter. That's a hard physical play there by Kevin Mills. I think they're going to get him with the foul, but you know, a little push there from the guard too, but uh, you're going to see that kind of close action. That's the first foul for Kevin Mills. That's the second team foul. He looks will get the ball off the side. Almost capacity crowd here tonight uh, in the Thunderdome. Always feels good on a Friday night to see this many people here. A lot of orange here tonight. Student section directly in front of us, so hopefully they'll play a factor in this game and you will, you'll hear them cheer. You're not going to hear them cheer there. Titus Young, Titus Young with a three-pointer there, and he matches uh, Spencer Havertz's three-pointer, and we're all tied up at five apiece. For Curry from outside. George for Curry gets his first three of the night. Eight to five. Mahala stretches their lead to three. And break the split, take it to the basket. It's going to draw the foul. That was number three, Titus Young. I think we'll see, but I think it's Cody Gladue on the foul. Nope. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm trying to look across the court. And we'll wait for uh, the. Indicator that's going to be on George for Curry. It's his first foul, third team foul. Titus Young is going to go to the line. And he misses his first one. <coughs> Excuse me. Titus Young makes his second one. It's eight to six, Valhalla on top. Either one of these teams could really start their season off, their league play season off with a great start. If they managed to get this win this early. Kevin Mills, uh, nice attempt at an athletic move. Nice put back by him as well. Both shots fall for not, and Helix is going to be uh, going the other direction. Half-court set, Milden Hall down underneath the basket, being guarded by Gladue. Way outside, that's an air ball, but nice uh, athletic response there by number 23, Kalen Mitchell. Kalen Mitchell cleans up the errant shot and is able to uh, cash that in for, uh, for two points. We're all tied up at eight. Four minutes left to go in this first quarter. A lot of ball fakes tonight, I think, only because Helix is so athletic that uh, you want a ball fake to try to give yourself an advantage there. They're very quick. Nice pass by Havard. Gladue can't get to go to go. Rebound brought down by Mitchell. Kalen Mitchell for three. Can't get it to go. A couple Norsemen down there. Kevin Mills pulls down that rebound. And we're going the other direction. Nice fast pace already at the start of this game. Eight apiece. 
Both teams uh, athletic, both teams playing man. Both teams not afraid to try to challenge each other. Spencer Havard, that ball goes short. Good attempt at rebound, Gazelle underneath the basket. He misses the shot, but he draws the foul. Gazelle will go to the line to shoot two. Gazelle's first shot, his first free throw is uh, no good. That foul was on Romario Wilson. That was his first foul of the night. And both shots missed there by Gazelle. And that's what Helix is going to do pretty well tonight. That's Derek Chandler uh, with, with the uh, bucket there off the nice dish. But that's what they're going to like to do. You know, they get you spread out, and then they attack uh, and, and, and take advantage through some nice timely passes, and that's what you saw there. Helix coming off a, somewhat of a surprising loss to Elkhorn Valley, but Elkhorn Valley has just uh, progressively gotten better. Definitely good athletes at Elkhorn Valley, so definitely no slouch there. But they did come off of some, what some people are calling a surprise loss to, to El Cajon. Nice steal there by Spencer Havard. He gets Norseman going the other direction. Gazelle going to shoot this one from three. We're going to get a foul underneath the basket. This foul appears by the reaction of Christian Bell to go against him. That'll be his first foul. That will be uh, the, the second team foul, I believe, for, uh, for Helix. Helix right now early in this contest, two-point advantage over Valhalla. Back to the corner, Spencer Havard from the corner, no good. And uh, number five, Romario Wilson. One thing you can see that he probably does pretty well, and that is dunk a basketball. And uh, Romario Wilson gets his first two points of the night. Jordan Kazar in the game for the Norsemen. Jacob Hammond also in. Kevin Mills throws up a shot, no good. Kazar with the rebound. Good attempt underneath. We think we're gonna get another foul. It looks like maybe on Christian Bell again, we'll see. not be a shooting foul while uh, Valhalla will get the ball underneath the basket. 136 left to go in this first quarter of play. Helix enjoys a four point lead. Kazar's shot is uh, no good and here comes Helix. That's gonna be a travel. Good call there by the officials from Mario Wilson. Uh, trying to do a little something in the paint um, and uh, traveled in the process. Andrew Lazoya checks back in for Cody Gladue. Minute 27 left to go in this first quarter. If you're watching right now, you're watching Orange Nation TV's coverage. First game of the year for Grossmont League action. We had a double header, girls basketball. Bahala before this won a, an exciting fashion over, over uh, Helix. Lazoya's shot is no good. Mahalo will retain possession. Kevin Mills the inbound for the Norseman. Got to get that ball in. That was pretty close there. Good defensive pressure there by Helix. Floor appears to be a little slick there in that corner. Hopefully at quarter they'll be able to get that wiped down. Andrew Lazoya looking to drive. He's going to pop up from inside the three-point line. He gets that friendly home glass to go. And uh, Andrew Lazoya picks up his first two points of the evening, 10 to 12, Helix advantage. Uh, Bahal is going to get called with a foul. And it looks like uh, number...
Number three, Spencer Havard will pick up his first foul of the evening. And that's going to be the, the fourth team foul overall for Bahala. Bahala accumulating some fouls uh, fairly regularly here in this first quarter. Forty-five seconds left to go in this first quarter of action. It'll be interesting to see at some point if uh, Kevin Mills pre There's got to be. There's what I was hoping to see. And uh, before I even get the sentence out, we're going to get an offensive foul on number 13, Oscar Picasso. I was wondering if we'd see that. Kevin Mills is a heck of an athlete and very quick. Um, and he's going to play pretty much suffocating defense if you give him that opportunity. Picasso wasn't too happy with that suffocating defense. And he gave him a shove, and he's done that a few times, which is uh, if you're going to get away with it, you know, it's probably not a smart or not a bad move. Pass inside to Lazoya. Lazoya in the land of the trees. He puts that ball up. It doesn't seem to matter. Lazoya finds it, gets it to go. Lazoya has another bucket. Bahala ties it up with 12 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Exciting first quarter. There's a steal by Hammett. Hammett attacks the basket, and he's going to get it to go. And that shot is no good. And just like that, Bahala finds some energy there late in the first quarter. Jacob Hammett with a pretty, pretty athletic and uh, falling away layup. And your Norseman take the first lead. Excuse me, they, they take a lead after the first quarter. Pretty exciting first quarter. Five, uh, four team fouls for each team. So they're keeping that balanced. In that first quarter of play, uh, Titus Young for Titus Young for uh, Helix had three points. Mario Wilson uh, had two points. And Mitchell and Chandler each had uh, two points. Spencer Havard in that first. So we're about ready to pick up second half action between Helix and Bahala. Joining me in the second quarter of action will be athletic director Robert Wilson and uh, former, former girls basketball coach here at Helix, or excuse me, at Bahala as I watched Helix miss that shot. That was number one, Xavier Jones on the miss. Lazoya's shot from the corner is no good. Another missed shot by Helix. Nice putback attempt there. He's gonna give him enough putbacks, you're gonna probably draw a foul, and that's exactly what happened there. Anyway, as I was saying, I have Robert Wilson, a former girls basketball coach, uh, athletic director for the last number of years. But tonight you got to see something I hadn't really ever seen before, and that is girls basketball's victory uh, over Helix. Do you have anything to say about that? Man, it's been a long time. 2003, if I remember correct, is the last time we beat Helix in a, in a league game. So that was very exciting to see um, a girls program that has struggled the last couple of years and, and turn around and, and back to back wins. They beat Santana on Wednesday, same score. So uh, yeah, no, it's it's a turn of the tide hopefully for girls basketball, it's great. Pretty interesting to see all those freshmen out there. Um, I believe uh, Charles had about 18 points tonight, most of which were in the first half, but uh, Krieger Phillips had a nice finish to that game, so good for them. Absolutely, that was that was huge down the stretch. She made the, the critical buckets when they, when they needed to be made, so that was pretty cool to see. Derek Chandler adds that free throw. Okay, his total up to three points. It's 14-13, Bahala with a one-point lead. Kevin Mills with the ball looking to penetrate. Pretty tough against this athletic team. In fact, that's a turnover. So far, uh, so good for, for the Norsemen, though, matching up pretty well with the athleticism of Bahala. So we were talking earlier, how long has John Singer been the coach at, at Helix? Do you know? You know I don't have enough fingers and toes. I, it's got to be 30-plus years. Uh, he was a legend when I was playing at Granite Hills. Yeah, it's, I, it's been a long time. Obviously, he's had a lot of success, and a lot of good athletes have, has come his way. A lot of action on the backside there. That's a pretty easy bucket there by Romario Wilson when you're uh, left alone on the backside like that. Uh, not, not, not good there. But 
So going forward as we enter this, uh, I guess we're about the midway point of this winter season of sports. What are some of the highlights you'd like to talk about? That's some crazy action there. I don't need to explain that. You probably saw that at home. And that's got to be a foul, and that's exactly what that's going to be. Um, there should probably be something there, too. Uh, normally, the home crowd there, home crowd doesn't appreciate going down and dunking about a minute after the foul was called. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think the referee saw what was going on. Yeah, there. maybe Chandler didn't hear the whistle. Yeah, uh, you know those Fox 40 whistles are difficult to hear sometimes. Hey, ruckus crowd here at Valhalla. A very good opener. This is probably one of the best crowds I, in recent memory I've seen uh, an and, uh, <coughs> opener this early in the year. Anyway, as I was asking you, Robert, uh, this early in the winter season, what are some of the highlights uh, of all sports here at Valhalla? Well, I, I think the the quick start by the boys team here, and they started their their uh, opening tournament. I, I think they were four, four and one. I think to start the tournament, so they, they had a good start. Um, and uh, I think our wrestling program, who's off to a two and zero start in in, uh, in their league play, um, they got they have a tough one against Duquesne. I understand you uh, you had uh, Coach Bulette during the girls' game, which is pretty good. Nice That's hit, Andrew Lazoya for three. Andrew Lazoya has been pretty dangerous from the three point line at his time at Valhalla, and he shows uh, Helix why. 17-15. You're right. We did talk to Coach. Coach Bulette, and we're going to be covering that duel live on Thursday. So those of you at home want to watch some wrestling, we're going to be bringing that to you. Anything else? Uh, how's uh, the aquatics right now? Aquatics. Girls, girls water polo had a huge win last night against uh, Granite Hills league rival. For years and years and years, it's been Granite Hills and Valhalla. And came down to the wire. Uh, Valhalla, 8-7 to seven victory. That's a shot from number 23, Kaylin Mitchell. Kaylin Mitchell adds a, another three points to his total. Yep, girls basketball with the win there. Uh, if they get a win against Grossman on Tuesday, they'll be undefeated halfway through league um, when they'll have Granite back at their place. Nice pass to Hammett. Yeah. Hammett gets it to go. Kazar, nice assist. And nice job there by the young duo there. And that foul, I believe, is going to be on. Uh, was that on? I haven't seen him put that up yet. As we see, uh, Spencer Havard comes in for the Norseman. And um, I don't know if that foul ended up being on. Uh, we're still waiting to hear on that one. It's kind of hard to see over here. Uh, Mildenhall checks back in for Helix. 19-18 advantage as, excuse me, as Jacob Hammett goes to the line to try to add that. He is un unfortunately could not do that. Once again, this is a good matchup to watch. Kevin Mills guarding anybody is always uh, pretty interesting because he's so athletic, and we've already seen uh, him frustrate uh, Highlander this evening with the offensive foul. Nice job by Lazoya. Good defense. He's got uh, doesn't have numbers, but he puts that one up. Lazoya off to a hot start tonight, 21 to 18. That's Lazoya's, I believe, uh, ninth point. Uh, he, of he's the so night. tough on defense. That was a great turnover. Absolutely, he's a really fun kid to watch because uh, you know he gives. He, he seems to give 100% uh, all the time. As that passes the turnover, 21-18, Norseman on top. 4:35 left to go in this first quarter of Grossmont Hills League action. Looks like we had. Co I knew I was not crazy. I'll take this minute. Coach Bulette, the wrestling coach, stole my keys, and I now feel so much better that I did not lose my keys. All right. <laughs> I Jeez. I sent a text to you. Four minutes left to go here in this quarter. <laughs> Kevin Mills is going to let that one go and uh, just off the rim. From this angle, it looked pretty nice there for a second. We're under four minutes, three point lead for Bahala. Shot from the corner. And that is pretty good shot there by Romario Wilson. And uh, nice nice shooting tonight by both teams early on. Lazoya says, I can do it too, but not that time. Didn't get it to fall. We're all knotted up at 21, and here comes Helix. There's not a shot anybody didn't like in this job. No, right exactly, now. absolutely. Wow. Uh, Titus Young, that's a nice take to the basket. Uh, that's about as pretty as they get to the basket as well, and it's hard to defend that. We're going to get a timeout. Keith Jackson is going to call that timeout. 23-21, 3.25 left to go in uh, first half of action here tonight. 
Uh, Valhalla and Helix trading baskets. Right now, Helix is off the advantage, 23-21. So next week, as uh, we've said a few times, Orange Nation TV is going to be covering on Monday and Tuesday. We've got two basketball games here. We've got Rancho Bernardo on Monday. It's always a tough school up in the North County. It doesn't matter if they're having a down year or not. They're always a solid ball club, always solid coached. Absolutely, and it's uh, we always talk about the North County bias. And uh, anytime you can beat a North County school in anything, whether it be Parcheesi, cricket, or basketball, you're going to feel pretty good about it. And I had joked with Keith Jackson, uh, the head coach for the boys' team, that, that Rancho Bernardo might be still upset about that football game. Uh, the, the playoff team with one win looked very much like that the night we played them. So uh, maybe their basketball team will be looking for some revenge. I don't know. I mean, I say if we get a crowd like this again on Monday, I think we're going to be a tough team to beat, that's a for sure. Absolutely. Rancho Bernardo plays in that palace up there, one of the biggest high school gyms I've seen, you know. Yeah, and, one uh, of the few schools that have one of the uh, scoreboards suspended above the uh, court. Kind of cool. Tough attempt there by Spencer Haver. Can't get it to go. Plays a little defense. Nice effort there by number 23, Kalen Mitchell. You start to wonder, well, I guess he, he did start, but uh, Kalen Mitchell is a pretty, pretty spectacular uh, player so far early in this first half. I believe that's his seventh point of the night. Kazar for three. Spencer Havard, good effort to try to get that off uh, Highlander, but he uh, falls short. Four-point lead now, and one of the things you have to guard against when you play a team that is ex as experienced as Helix is these four-point leads can turn into eight and ten and twelve-point leads. Uh, Helix is a momentum team; they have a lot of athleticism, as we've seen, and and uh, they can turn those into points quickly. I think if the defense can change defenses up on them and just give them something new to look at every other time down the floor, it could help. Uh, another bucket by Titus Young. Uh, maybe a little zone action here shortly for Valhalla because. Uh, Helix has had their way driving in the basket uh, the last few times. That's hard to stop. It really is. Spencer Haver tries to, to return the favor, but he's going to draw a foul. I think that's Kalen Mitchell's foul, and I do believe that's going to be Kalen Mitchell's first. Fakuri comes in for Hammett. One of the key factors tonight, obviously, is uh, probably one of the most uh, focused on ankles in the East County is uh, Spencer <laughs> Havard's ankle. Uh, I think it's, I joked with Spencer today, I believe it's been the topic of not one, but two articles in East County Sports about his ankle. Yeah, but he's moving pretty good what I can see so far, but I know that uh, I know that, that can't can't feel good after missing the last three games of the, the Vegas tournament. Uh, he rolled in that first game of the tournament, which I know uh, he was disappointed to get a chance to show himself out there, but he, uh, he looks like he's moving okay now. <laughs> he misses the front end of the one and one. 27-21. I'll tell you what, Titus Young, Another basket for Titus Young, and uh, he's making that look awfully easy from anywhere near the paint. And I'll tell you, that's something Valhalla's got to stop, or this could be an ugly night. 29-21, timeout for, for the Norsemen. 2.07 left to go in this first quarter. What things started out pretty hot for Valhalla. Uh, Helix, you know, not doing anything fancy. No, One and done on this end and returning the They finally started rebounding. They weren't rebounding in that first quarter. So, we, you know, we weren't hitting a few shots that we needed to hit, but uh, we kept fighting for the boards. Well, now now they're getting those rebounds and pushing the ball the other way, and that's 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 a telling stat. Yeah, it's it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what Keith does, uh, Coach Jackson does out of this timeout. Uh, do they go to a zone or, do, you know, obviously they love to play man and they feel like they're athletic enough to hang with them, but that's a lot of drive into the basket. You know, you got to do something in there, so. That is. We've got, to, we've got to stay athletic across the board, though. They've, you know, there's not one athlete on that Helix team that, that uh, can't get up and down that floor. Absolutely. If you enjoyed tonight's game, and if you want to, or if you're here just talking about this girls game that was so great, you can go on to our website, Play On Sports site, and you can watch that girls game as many times as you'd like and relive the great upset tonight by the Lady Norseman. You can also watch this game in its entirety uh, right now, live, and you can watch it all weekend long if you'd like. So uh, that's the beauty of uh, Orange Nation TV. 2.07 left to go in this half, 29-21. Helix has uh, slowly but surely extended that lead. Pretty neck and neck for most of this game up until the last minute or two. Mahala is in bad need of a bucket on this possession. Lazoya hopefully will give him that bucket and uh, unfortunately that's some athleticism right there uh, that Helix does with that nice block. Absolutely. A nice pump fake into the basket. Might have gotten something. But, oh, hey, good steal, though. There's his defense again. For Curry on the run. And for Curry, he's going to get that one to go. 
We'll take that. Minute 40 left to go in this half. 29-23. Nice steal there, pass from Havard up front to Lozoya. Lozoya from the short corner, can't get it to go. We're gonna be out of bounds. It's gonna be Helix, or excuse me, Bahala is gonna retain possession. Well, if we can keep playing some strong defense on this end, that's going to lead to some buckets. So we'll take that, but we've got to find a way to convert some baskets on this offensive end, half-court half -court offense as well. Some of you may, when the camera goes wide, you can see that Norse mobile in the corner. We do have a ship here at Valhalla, probably the only high school in the country that has one. Spencer average three is short, draws a little contact uh, in this follow-through, but not enough for a foul. But maybe at halftime, I think uh, Mr. Lund, our VP, is going to drive that ship out onto the court and uh, trust me, you've seen nothing like it until you've seen this ship in action. I've had the honor of driving it several times, and it's a, a lot of fun. Kevin Mills gets that ball in the wing, and really not a lot of shots, open shots. Good take by Havard. That's pretty much all he had, but there's nobody there to rebound. To rebound. A lot of green shirts. No penetration right now. Helix has got Vahal exactly where they want him defensively and maybe offensively as they look at this basket. Although, you'll take the... You'll take those kind of looks all night. That, that, that's absolutely. not the one I was thinking they'd get. Nice pass by Havard to Lozoya. Nice He's going to have an opportunity at a three-point play. And uh, Bahala responding well after Keith Jackson's last timeout. 34.8 seconds left to go. 29-25 Lozoya with an opportunity to cut that lead to three points. Absolutely. Going back shorter, a little bit shorter, a little bit quicker again to try and match up with some of that speed. And, and uh, I think that's paying off dividends right there. Free throw does not fall for the Northmen. 29-25, we're under 30 seconds left. A little bit of pressure here by Bahal. you got to be careful, though, in that first part of the half. Uh, Helix found a little bit of open shots on the back side of that pressure. 18 seconds left. The uh, shot clock is off. This could be the final possession of the first half. A little screen off the top attempt there. The student section trying to fool Helix. They do throw up a shot. Maybe they believed him. That's actually pretty good by the student section. Uh, that one will get thrown up, and uh, Romario Wilson is going to walk off to the uh, locker room, the proud owner of another three-pointer. And 25-32 is our halftime score. Helix on top. And we're going to get some totals here in a little bit. We're going to take a one-minute break as the cheerleaders take the court to do uh, some halftime cheering. And I hope this is a friendly meeting between the two cheerleaders. I got a little scared when they both ran out there, but maybe they're doing something together. We'll break right now for the cheerleaders to do their thing.
what you're looking at right now, uh, people back home watching this game, is is uh, Mary Beth Kasten, the principal of Valhalla, is going to drive the north ship. And we're going to get a nice tight shot of her coming in. So why don't we zoom in there and get a look at it. There we go. And um, so this is for our halftime entertainment, your halftime entertainment. Enjoy.
All right, we're back. We're getting ready for second half action. Helix 32, Valhalla 25. We'll get you caught up with some scores. In the first half for Helix, uh, two leading scores for them, and Titus Young with 10. Uh, Mitchell, uh, excuse me, number 23, Kalen Mitchell had 10 points. Uh, Romario Wilson had nine, and Chandler, Derek Chandler had three. For Valhalla in the first half, George Fukuri with five, Lazoya with nine. Nice finish there for him, especially. Spencer Havard started hot with five, and uh, Hammett uh, with four. All right, we're starting second half action. Bahal with possession. Spencer Havard underneath the basket. Nice kick out to Gazelle, and doesn't get the three point to fall, but he's going to get number 23. Mr. Mitchell's going to get himself another foul. Kalen Mitchell and Gazelle should be shooting three. Yeah, Gazelle, if we can get Gazelle hot, that would be a huge, huge plus for these Norsemen. Absolutely. He's a great setup shooter, you know, spot up shooter, um, and it really has been over the years uh, for Bahala. I say the years like it's been 10, but I mean, it seems like he's, <laughs> he's played a lot of varsity basketball in his short time here at Bahala. He's got a pretty sweet stroke. I think he scored 29 in a game earlier this year wow. and had uh, I think four or five threes in that game. First one was good for Gazelle, and the second one was good for Gazelle, so nice. Start so far, see if he can get the trifecta here from the free throw line. And we're at a four point lead. A little unorthodox way to start, uh, maybe <laughs> with three free throws from the, from, uh, the line there, but uh, definitely Bahalo will take that. <coughs> So uh, our camera crew, ever so uh, good, they're going to go handheld here uh, to accommodate for the student section that's standing. Um, we, we can't complain because it's just good to see a student section care here at Valhalla. And uh, that basket by number five, Romario Wilson, uh, adds more to the Helix lead. A nice steal there. Romario Wilson cannot hold on to the ball. Lozoya is able, excuse me, Gazelle is able to get handled. Havard from the corner, no good. Rebound by Kevin Mills, good hustle. Lozoya from the corner, and uh, another errant. Kevin Mills opted for Curry for three, and that is absolutely good for Curry. Is that a two or a three? I couldn't see. They did give him the three. Spencer Havard, uh, excuse me, in the game there underneath. Helix. All right, Helix retains possession 34 to 31. Drive to the basket, would have counted, but it didn't fall. Looks like George, for, excuse me, looks like David Gazelle will be the recipient of that foul. And number 21, Christian Bell is going to go to the line. Christian Bell's second free throw is also good. Like I said, a little natural uh, barrier to seeing the game for us right now. Student section uh, giving it uh, full throat by standing in front of us. Uh, we can't complain though, we're happy to have him here. Spencer having a little bit of trouble, gets out of it. Back to Lazoya for three. <laughs> Excuse me, Gazelle for three. And uh, hopefully that uh, signifies Gazelle catching fire there from the three-point line. That, that would be great. 34 to 36. Nice good steal defense. there. Good steal by Fakuri. Up to Kevin Mills, no good. Fakuri keeps it in play. Nice job. Good uh, effort by number 12. Spencer Havard with the ball fake. Drive and kick out to Fakuri for three. Fakuri's three is no good. Nice rebound way above the rim goes Kalen Mitchell. We're going to get a foul underneath, and I think uh, that's going to be on Kevin Mills. Yep. Looks like Mills got him reaching in. I think that's going to be Kevin Mills' second foul of the night. 
34-36. Definitely the exciting basketball game we thought we would get. Two pretty athletic teams. Always tough to see with Helix is a lot of times they play in some uh, in some tournaments that not a lot of the other Grossmont Conference schools play in. So sure. you know this being the first league game for for Helix is a good chance to see where where they uh, where they fit in. Absolutely. Nice pass. pass ahead to Kevin Mills. Great pass by Lazoya. Absolutely beautiful pass to Kevin Mills, and mm -hmm. Kevin Mills knocks that home. That's his first uh, field goal of the night. 36-36, 5:19 left to go in this first excuse me third quarter play. Nice. Moved the box bucket. Romario Wilson putting on quite a show tonight. Super athletic kid. Interesting matchups right there. Spencer Havard lets that one go, but you had big number Mildenhall out on uh, Gazelle there for a second, which is kind of an interesting matchup since uh, Mildenhall is the tallest guy on the court, I believe, right now. See if the Hall can exploit that. That was kind of an interesting match matchups there. Number 23, Kalen Mitchell's three pointers, uh, no good. Mm -hmm. With the Helix size advantage, if they're going to take that shot all day, that would be a real yeah. benefit for the Norseman. All right, we got some substitutions. Number 15, Derek Chandler checks back in for the Helix Highlanders. Played a little bit, obviously, in the first half. Nice pass back to the inbounder, which is number 23, Kalen Mitchell. Looks like we got caught sleeping underneath the basket there on that one. Good execution by Bahala, excuse me, by Helix on that out of bounds or inbounds play. Spencer Havard, after starting this game pretty hot, has been awfully cold and uh, see if he can get him back in action. He's got a chance right underneath the bucket and he can't get it to go. It's a tough, tough uh, miss there. Pretty close opportunity. Doesn't miss very many of those, but that. You got to have all of those against a team like Helix. Here comes Kevin Mills on the return, and uh, nice defense there by number 23, Kalen Mitchell. He seems to be everywhere tonight. Good defensive play. Tough take to the basket there. No good. Gazelle with the ball. Gazelle's going to pass off to Mills from the corner. No good. Good effort by for Curry there under the basket, and he might get a tip off this yet. Good scrappy play. That's a tough take to the basket by number five, Romario Wilson. Hard to defend. He gets it to go, plus we're going to get a foul. Hopefully, uh, Gazelle is not injured. Jordan Kazar checks in for the Norseman. Gazelle's going to come out, have a look at uh, whatever may have ailed him. And he picked up a second foul there as well, David Gazelle. 36-42. Felix has found a way to extend that lead again. Yeah, that rim has been unkind to us last couple times down the court. We've got some decent shots. We just can't get them to fall right now. But we just got to keep them from getting that, extending that lead too far where we, uh, we're out of reach. So. Well, the thing about it, Helix is getting an awful lot of high percentage shots. You know, three inches from the basket uh, is not necessarily the toughest shot in the world. They're getting that through their athleticism. Athleticism, Mike, that's an easier word for me to think about than say. But the Hall is going to have to do that, and that's not good to have a turnover right there. No, we finally got some movement on the outside there and got some people moving around and unfortunately one too many steps. 325 left to go in this third period of action here tonight. 36-43, the visiting Highlanders. Um, a comfortable lead right now in this game is as big a lead as they've had all night. Some nice pressure there by Bahala, but all for naught. He does get an attempt at the basket. Nice rebound by Kazar. Got to look and be patient for a shot here. Got to work for one and maybe get an offensive board. Those have been few and hard to come by uh, so far in the second half. There's a little bit of defense or a little bit of physical touch. <laughs> Excuse me. Ram Romario Wilson basically almost mugged there uh, for Curry there, and he's going to pick up his second foul, and that's good. One of the things that uh, because of the quickness of Helix is, you know, they're going to get away with a little bit more contact than the average athlete who's they're able to uh, do some things with their athleticism. And there's a case where for Curry was able to draw that foul. That's going to be the third, or excuse me, second team foul on Helix. Lozoya from three-point line. Big hit. That's a great shot right there. That's a big possession all the way around. 39-43 now. Third three-pointer of the game, I think.
Helix looked like Helix taking a timeout on that. Yeah, I, Singer's I, not happy. Um, that's a that's a tough one. To, uh, I've been curious to know when that timeout was was called. Yeah, it didn't seem like a lot of possession there. But anyway, uh, not a lot of possession. <laughs> but, uh, but John Singer's been around long enough time. He calls timeout. He's going to get his timeout. Yeah, absolutely. 39-43 left to go. Or excuse me, 39 to 43. Helix on top. Opening night for Hills League action. You know, this this is uh, going to be a real tough league. These games, uh, night in, night uh, out, are going to be tough. You can look at Grossmont, Granite Hill, still can. You go down the line, they're, they're all tough. West Isn't Hills next Tuesday is going to be another one. We had, we had double overtime, triple overtime game against them last year, yeah, if absolutely. I remember correctly. And there's just not a lot that separates any of these teams. You know, the, the days of uh, everybody cornering the market on talent are at least gone for right now. And it's just uh, it's a good action. So if you want to come out and see some good games, definitely and, and stay tuned here to Orange Nation TV. We'll be bringing some high-quality basketball to you all season long. He looks at the half-court set, 2.30 left to go in the third quarter. That's got to be an offensive, and they're not going to give it an offensive uh, a foul. They're going to give him a, a little dip of the shoulder there, but I guess uh, we weren't set. And I think uh, that foul is going to be on, I want to say, uh, I think it's on Spencer, but I, I haven't seen the indication. Looks like Spencer, yeah, number three. Yeah, so Spencer uh, Havard picks up his second foul tonight. Uh, Christian Bell knocks that first free throw down. He's a uh, perfect three for three for the night. We'll see if that changes on this shot. And it does. And it does. Up here, it's a little tough to tell, but man, when, when you get down to that court, they really do have a size of Ennis on, on most of our kids down there, and then uh, that's going to play a, a large part on the rebounding game. If we are, if, if we can't start making some buckets, it's going to be tough for us. We're not going to get as many chances as I think we used to. Absolutely, and you know, right now, if you if you count up all the basket attempts that Bahal has had this quarter, almost all of them have been outside the three-point line. Now, if you shoot a high percentage, that's fine. But when you're giving up baskets that close to the bucket, yep. it's going to be hard to compete with Helix if they're getting the two-footers and you're, you're going to have to settle for the, the long-range shots. So that's really, if we were if we were plotting Bahala's shots right now, uh, you know, really, they're having to rely on very low percentage shots. And there's another one. I mean, that's uh, 25 feet out right there. Absolutely. And that's, that's not the, the same percentage as you're going to get with a Helix. And, and now, this is that kind of run that Helix has been known for over the years. They get you down, they get you emotional, and they stick it to you with just good athleticism, good coaching, good play around the basket. We'll see if Ball can weather the storm and, uh, and, and make some plays down the stretch. They're going to have to, uh, to be able to capitalize on some defensive plays and, and, and cut this lead by doing exactly what Helix is doing to us, breaking the press and you know, get some easy buckets. All right, we got a foul here in transition. And, uh, and it looks like they're... That foul is going to be on number 23, Kalen Mitchell. That's going to be his third foul, and that uh, gets him ever so close to foul trouble, and he's quite an athlete, so obviously uh, that would work in Bahala's favor. That's the fourth, excuse me, third team foul. Not a lot of fouls so far in this game. Spencer Havard takes a nice take there, and he does get that one to go. Nice use of the glass right there. And Spencer Havard gets on the scoreboard uh, this first time in the second half and really the first time in, uh, since early on in this game. One minute left to go in this uh, third quarter, 45-41 Helix advantage. That's a rare missed basket, but once again, that's a pretty nice rebound there by number 35, Will Mildenhall. And, you know, once again, you forced them to miss a shot, and they, they come back and they get that rebound and get a nice, easy bucket. Kind of ugly underneath that basket there. Singer wanted a foul. He's not going to get it. That very easily should have been something, I guess. Uh, a lot of contact. Jordan Kazar is going to fire that one up. And uh, once again, that's uh, it's Bahala very rarely is going to get two shots on the possession. And they're not 100% shooters, so uh, that's not <laughs> bode well that's not for Bahala. Well. Yeah. Bahala's got to get a little more selective in their shots. It's under 10 night seconds. That's a missed three-point opportunity. Put back, no good. And they're going to get a foul underneath with 2.8 seconds left to go. And it looks like 
number 35, Mildenhall, will go to the line. See a, lot of, see a lot of hands on hips, a lot of hands on knees. These guys are tired, and they've got to find a way to dig deep and, and not give up so many offensive rebounds and putbacks. It's going to be tough, but that, that's, that's right there. You've got to, you've got to dig deep right now. Absolutely. 2.8 seconds left, six-point lead by Helix Milton all the line, and that first one is good. Mills, Gazelle, and get a couple extra seconds rest before the intermission. Terrell McKay comes in for Bahala. Uh, gets a few moments here before the end of the quarter. It's a missed shot. That's a rebound by McKay. He's going to let that one go. And uh, <laughs> he was about an inch or two away from a, a dream opportunity and uh, a quality two seconds That's of playing fantastic. time that would have fallen. It did not fall, so after three quarters of plays, 48 to 41, your Norseman trail by seven points. We've got a whole quarter left to play. Uh, team fouls very low, so obviously free throws right now are not a factor. Um, it's a full house tonight, so we'll see if the crowd's a factor. Robert, watching the first three quarters, uh, what, what stands out to you? What stands out to me is exactly what we've been talking about tonight, the high percentage shot versus the lower percentage shot. The good news about the low percentage shots that we're taking is if we have to get some of those to fall, we're going to get back in this thing real quick. But, but yeah, you, you, you hate to see, see uh, baskets inside the paint for them and, and behind the arc for us. It just is not going to go well for us. And then the size, the Helix size and effort on the rebounding, especially at the late part of that third quarter. They, you know, they get attempt after attempt of high percentage shots. It's, it's not going to go well for the Norseman if that continues. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the other factors at play here, too, is uh, – you know, one of the things that East County Sports pointed out was that the advantage that Helix had was with athleticism and experience, and uh, you see a little bit of both of that tonight. Uh, Bahala, though, you know, they got a couple players that have played quality varsity minutes over the last few years, so they're not necessarily a slouch in that department. But eight minutes left to go. Bahala obviously gets another crack at Helix down the stretch, but I'll tell you what, it would be nothing sweeter than come back and make, make this uh, – uh, a, a nice win for, for he, uh, Bahala over Helix in this opener. Absolutely. We'd love to give the, the home fans something to watch. But that's a heck of a shot. And if they're going to take those shots, it's going to make things even tougher. Yeah, Titus Young uh, starts the fourth quarter off with uh, authority there, 50 to 41. That's, a, that's actually a little further away from the basket than Helix has had to shoot. Uh, but he's got a nice, sweet touch to his shot, and as you see it there. Nine point advantage. Spencer Havard, the senior defensive player of the year in football. Let's see if he can get this team going. McKay for three. Get and that he roll. gets that one. Hey, it's nice to get a roll on that, that rim this half. I think he warmed up his arm there right before half um, with that half court or full court shot. Terrell McKay gets that three pointer to go. Looks like he stepped out of bounds. Looks like the ball's coming back our way. Now, I have not seen Terrell McKay play much this year. Obviously, I've only seen a handful of games from Valhalla, and we've only covered one, but. It'd be nice, uh, Terrell McKay, number 32, is uh, a, a junior, and that'd be another guy coming off the bench if he can give you some quality minutes and hit a couple threes. Uh, I think Coach Jackson would be pretty happy with that. See, Helix challenges every pass, and uh, every pass they're challenging. Now, I think the home crowd wouldn't mind a little foul there, but you can't, you can't fault the team for being scrappy to the ball. No, they're both, both teams have been getting on the floor. It's a good physical game. When the ball gets loose, they're, they're both going after and, it. And let's face it, Bahala has five team fouls. Helix has three. What does that tell you? Not a lot of fouls being called this late in the they're, game. They're letting them play. Absolutely. They're letting them get physical. And hand, there's a hand checking going left and right. None of that's being called. But, but, but they're, they're, both teams are fighting through it. All right, that's number five, Romario Wilson from three. And I'll uh, tell you what, too many more of those in this game is uh, going to get out of hand. 53-44, a lot of time left, but you just kind of get that feeling. Helix is starting to hit their stride a little bit, and, and Bahal is struggling just to get attempts. Every possession counts always, but there's that tough man-to-man -to -man defense, and they're surrounding Spencer. He can't do it all. Well, Zoe's got a heck of a mismatch down below if we can find a way to get it to him. Absolutely. Nice, there it is. There it is. Nice job, Coach. That's a nice job. We can exploit that. Um, I mean, he's, you got at least about four or five inches there. Absolutely. And you know what? As a from a helix standpoint, not absolutely not a bad foul at all for Xavier Jones. He gives up a ton of, you know, uh, distance there, a <laughs> height, and uh, not bad in that foul. Yeah. 
Lazoya's first free throw finds its mark. Looks like Mills coming back in, and looks like uh, Gazelle's coming in for the shooter after the uh, after the make here. I think that's Lazoya's uh, 13th point of the night. My my stats are completely unofficial. It's almost impossible for me to chew gum talk and keep stats, but I am giving it uh, the old college try tonight. So 46-54, 6.38 left to go in the fourth quarter. Full court pressure by the Norsemen. See if they can get this to pay off. They need to force a couple turnovers here. McKay fronted his man. Nice adjustment there. Uh, good job by Valhalla. And they're going to get a nice foul there on Helix. That's good. That's a great defensive uh, stand there for Valhalla. McKay giving him something off the bench. Yep, and, and Gazelle getting his hands in the passing lane right there. He closed out, got his hands up. Ball came right to him. That foul's on Chandler, and that is his second foul of the night. Now both teams are knotted up with five team fouls apiece with 6.29 left to go. A few more fouls. We're going to be talking free throws, and that also could come into play um, as this game unfolds. Kevin Mills off the top. Very quick one versus one there. Jones versus Mills. Ball off to Spencer Havard. Havard been kind of kept quiet, and he's going to draw a foul there. You know, we just talked to, that's Chandler, and that's going to be his third foul. We just talked about the few how few fouls are being called, and it looks like the officials maybe maybe making may some adjustments. Us. Yes, they may have. <laughs> uh, I wish they would have heard me all those years I coached. Uh, fortunately, they did hear me, but they never listened. We'll just leave it at that. Kevin Mills, kick out to Spencer Havard. Spencer Havard looking to get hot. Uh, trying to do a little too much there, I think. But uh, Xavier Jones behind the back. That's a nice lay-in, but it doesn't nice get miss. We're going to get a foul. I'll tell you what, I didn't see it, so I shouldn't question it, but not even exactly where that foul even came from. I think they called it on uh, McKay. That would be his first foul. It, 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 I don't. I didn't even see anybody challenge Jones I don't when he went to the free throw, or excuse me, when he made the layup attempt. And they're saying it's after the shot. It's not a shooting foul. It's a good thing there's a foul there. I don't think uh, Singer was too too pleased with how the showboating and how that, that played out there. Yeah, well, I will tell you this. McKay just went and got that ball back from Valhalla. I'll tell you what, if, that's a nice effort by McKay. I think he's played some quality minutes. He uh, is. He's been in for now just, uh, just under two minutes, and uh, he's made a few things happen. Eight-point lead for the Highlanders. Six minutes left to go in this game. Valhalla uh, trying to hang in there, trying to get some possessions, trying to get some points. Gazelle for three, no good. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. Valhalla cannot make a play on it. Good hustle again by McKay. Eight-point lead. Really, the difference is, is uh, shot selection and getting shots to fall. I wouldn't say right now. I mean, obviously, Helix is awfully athletic and, and quick and fast, but Valhalla just hasn't been able to get the things to fall. Yeah. Well, Gazelle's a heck of a shooter right there, but he's trying, trying to force that. It's not quite the shot you want to take. It's a nice move to get to the basket. Does not get it to fall for Titus Young. We're going to get another foul here. We're going to be shooting number for, uh, excuse me, Romario Wilson will go to the line shoot two, it looks like. It can be frustrating as a player. You know, you've been playing physical all night and you haven't had a lot of fouls called, and then all of a sudden in two minutes you get quite a few fouls called. So I think the uh, players are just trying to figure out exactly where they stand with uh, the officials right now. And really costly. I believe that foul was called on David Gazelle, and that's going to be his fourth foul. And uh, I'll tell you what, Bahala cannot afford to lose anybody, but they definitely could not afford to lose him. And... Um, Obviously, you can hear the crowd's displeasure uh, with some of the uh, officiating, but that's going to happen anytime. You win by 30, I bet you can find a hometown uh, favorite that will tell you they didn't like the call. Absolutely. It's tough to be a zebra in any, in, any, uh, in any home court. Absolutely. Especially in the Thunderdome. And I will tell you, I, I scoffed at the title of Thunderdome. All I ever heard was stories about how loud it used to be. I'll tell you what, tonight I think uh, we're about as close to uh, those legendary stories as, as I've heard in a while. For the first game out, yes, I agree, but we need to build on this. I want to see I want to see standing room only come that Granite Hills game in a few weeks. That Granite Hills game, I believe, is, uh, uh, oh, you know, it's slipping my mind. But it's second week of February, if Absolutely. I think. Yep. Second week of February on that Tuesday night. And and, uh, and what's great about that rivalry, we'll be playing them first uh, January 30th at Granite Hills. And guess what? Orange Nation TV is going to be covering that game. It's going to be our one road game of, for basketball that I'm aware of at this juncture. So. Uh, make sure uh, you set, you don't have to set a DVR, you just have to set a bookmark, I guess, to the Play on Sports page. Maybe set a reminder in your phone. Or right, check our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter because uh, we put all those links everywhere. 
Well, Mario Wilson from the line, he gets his first one to fall. Well, Mario Wilson gonna try to make this a 10 point lead with 540 left to go in the game. And he fails at that. And we just gotta be more aggressive down there. I mean, you had position. Yep. You know what, draw a foul. I guess David obviously has four fouls, I believe, so maybe he can't be as aggressive as you'd like. But that's a tough take to the, to the basket. That uh, just shows you the quickness right there, because yeah. Kevin, Kevin Mills is one of the fastest kids we have around yeah. the school, and, and man, he, the guy just went right by him. Absolutely. He looks on attack here. You know, and right there, he, you know, he's just playing above the rim. And, you know, Wilson, Wilson gets up there, his hands are up 10 feet high, and, and uh, that's, that's tough to guard against. And uh, according to my unofficial stats, I think that's his 19th point of the night. So, uh, he, you know, Wilson having a pretty, pretty fair outing. And, it, and he adds to that with a steal right there. And uh, takes that one to the basket. And now give him 21. And uh, things not looking too great right now for, for Bahala. And we'll see if we get a timeout or any, something to change up this pace. Now that's a pretty obvious one there. Jordan Kazar draws that foul. Chandler, they'll pick up his fourth foul, I believe. We'll see for confirmation. Yeah, good take to the basket. Falling away a little bit, but uh, you know, finishing that strong and, and drawing the foul. That's, that's a nice way to stop the clock and maybe get some points on the board with the clock stop. Kazar gets that first one uh, to go. Fifty-nine forty-seven. Four minutes and thirty-nine seconds left to go in this basketball game. Really, Helix just now starting to separate itself uh, in terms of score. Uh, Mahala has made a valiant effort, made some mistakes uh, that's really cost them a chance to compete for this game. Down twelve, it still could, you know, a possibility, definitely within the realm of reality. But things got to occur, starting with a nice stop here. Helix likes to get you spread out there, and then they make these shots. And they actually, unfortunately, you know, that was one of the rare misses tonight for Helix. Looks and like that's when we found them. That's coming our way. We shoot one to one. And so uh, we got a, a foul on Helix. We're going to have one and one here for Valhalla. You know, watching Helix that possession, you know, it's typical John Singer. He's doesn't won 600 plus games for you know, a yeah. reason. He it's he's got them accident. he's got them slowing the, slowing the ball yeah. down, running some time off the clock and. He, uh, he knows that uh, the fewer the possessions of Valhalla sure. has, the less chances for Absolutely. opportunities for threes. 35 second shot clock, 12 point lead. You can, uh, you can wreak havoc with any comebacks if you do things the right way. Kevin Mills gets his first shot to go. And he gets the second one. That was the fourth foul on Wilson. That's a good thing. That is absolutely a great thing for, uh, for Valhalla. If you're a Helix fan, it's not a great thing. He's a wonderful athlete and uh, has been a huge contributing factor. Right there is an example of why Felix has been so successful in this game. You take a, a play like that, Chandler gets the ball literally off the glass, puts it up, puts it in, and draws a foul. And uh, just like that, David Gazelle's night is over. I believe that is his, was that on Gazelle? I, I didn't see the indication, I just saw. Yep, that would be number five. So that was his last foul of uh, the af afternoon or evening for him. Chandler adds to his point total. It's another free throw. Kevin Mills is going to put up a shot, and that's, you know, a, a good effort and all, but that's, uh, once again, those are those kind of low percentage, hard to make shots that they're getting. And uh, Felix is going to add to that lead right there, number five. Well, Mario Wilson having a great night. I don't know anything about his career, but I'd have to imagine 20 some odd points is uh, probably not a bad night for anybody and definitely not a bad night for him. Coach Jackson's gonna get that timeout. 3.37 left to go in this game, 49-64. It's a 15 point lead, um, not insurmountable, but Helix seems to be playing with uh, quite a lot of confidence and uh, seeming to be able to score at will and do things at will. Listening to Coach, looking at Coach Singer over there, you know, he, 
he, he's, he's uh, coaching to win this league championship. 15 point lead, three and a half minutes to go. It's not enough. He, he wants this. He wants to send a message to the rest of the league tonight. It looks absolutely, like absolutely, absolutely. And he looks like he's got the the horses to, you know, to earn that East County uh, sports uh, pick as a, as the favorite. But you know, obviously, this is the first game in a in a 10 game, 11 game circuit uh, for excuse me, 10 game circuit. And uh, you know, obviously, things can change, injuries, all those kinds of things. But uh, Bahala, obviously, you know, probably pretty disappointed at this point at the score. They do get another chance at all these people, and they knew the league was wide open whether they won or not tonight. Uh, but uh, obviously some improvements are going to have to be made. Uh, it's hard to coach athleticism. It's hard to make you faster. But definitely Bahala could eliminate some of the mistakes and take better shots, quite frankly. Maybe we're being a little critical tonight, but that's a, a credit to Helix's defense, really. I mean, it's not Bahala just purposely making bad shots. But they're going to have to find a way to get over the suffocating defense of Helix. There's another turnover for, for Bahala. And they're going to get a foul on McKay. Well, the great news for these Norsemen is they turn around in a couple of days and play back-to-back -back games and get a chance to forget about this Absolutely. one quickly. Absolutely. So both teams are going to be shooting lots of free throws down the stretch, I, I would imagine. Um, and so uh, Titus Young is going to try to add to his pretty solid night. I have Titus uh, Young down for 12 points. And it looks like that would be number 13. Of course, we'll have to look at the official book. It's uh, kind of difficult sometimes for me to keep track of everything, but uh, we're getting better every week here on Orange Nation TV. I'd like to say thanks to all our Orange Nation TV crew tonight working their second ever basketball game. Of course, we have Ode Youssef, our perennial producer, and uh, he's going to be taking some night classes. We're going to lose him on a couple basketball games. so. Uh, we, we could be in trouble because he is the backbone of, of what we do here. Another tough look for Bahala. Nice scrappy play by Kevin Mills. Nice three point there by Spencer Havard. Nice to get one of those to fall. I have Spencer Havard down for nine points. A little off what he what he normally has. That's an open look. You know, I'll uh, tell you what. I don't think uh, I don't think Kalen Mitchell's ever missed that many open looks in his life. You just can't, you just can't <laughs> give him those. You know, I, I tell you what. You, you could give me those because I can't hit you know water out in a boat. But uh, I'll tell you, Kalen Mitchell's going to make those uh, make you pay every time. 68-52. We're at about the two-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. He looks nice ball control there, nice ball movement. And uh, Mario Wilson's going to add to his impressive night. We'll be under two minutes here in a second. Spencer Havard not giving up, firing up a three here. And uh, this is where it could be a little sloppy here. Nice dish off, nice rejection there by Spencer Havard. Spencer Havard kind of a little tender on that ankle, and maybe I'm just seeing things, but he does seem a little bit uh, slowed. Um, right now, under minute 45 right now left to go in this opener for, for Bahala. Man, things are just going the way the ball gets tipped out and right through our legs. I mean, unfortunately, you know, a lot of things, unfortunate things have happened tonight too, it's like, just like that one there. Absolutely, I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, shooter's luck, or in this case, maybe helix luck, uh, getting that off the tip. Nice ch take by for Curry, but once again, you know, you fall down, get hit by the ball, and it goes out of bounds. I mean. If that was, uh, if he was wearing green tonight, he would have landed a shot and drew a foul and uh, somehow would have been a 10 point play or something. 52-72, uh, 20 point lead for Helix. Helix uh, definitely uh, played a very good game tonight. John Singer, you would expect that out of a Helix team. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to get Spencer out in there, give him the last couple minutes off. And, uh, it's probably not bad. There's a lot of game that kid's got to play, and uh, the last few minutes of this game really are, are without a doubt. So, uh, Titus, excuse me, Wilson. Uh, Romario Wilson puts a little icing on his uh, performance tonight. Uh, a little bit of style points on the dunk there. McKay for three, and McKay... Hey. <laughs> McKay's been one of those bright spots. Came off the bench, uh, narrowly hit a shot from full court right at the end of the third quarter. And uh, 
Fence has hit a couple threes. Felix is going to get some reserves in here, bring in some uh, warm, uh, some, some people that have sat on the bench tonight. Uh, 57 seconds left to go, 55-74. So obviously, Bahala has got a lot of notes that they've written down during this game, some things to work on. Well, they'll definitely be back at it tomorrow morning, practice bright and early, and, and uh, they'll talk about a few of these things, but you got to have a short memory yeah. and come back Monday. Well, I'm going to give Alex Wilburn the tip there. I'm not sure if that's really his bucket, but we'll give it to him. Uh, turnover there for Bahala. Bahala is going to bring in a couple, a couple players for them. Looks like we're going to get a few more. James Martin. James Martin and Lorenzo Lucas. And I just dropped. I almost dropped my uh, roster, but Yusuf Kegi is the other uh, person that came in recently for Valhalla. Got Lazoya still on the court. 25.8 seconds left to go. We got Jacob Hammett out there as well to finish out the, the run here. Just a recap, the first two and a half quarters were anybody's ba basketball game, but Helix really asserted themselves uh, through solid play, athleticism, being able to run the court, high percentage shots, you name it, and they were eventually able to uh, be a little too much for Valhalla tonight. 10 seconds left to go. Jones from three points, and uh, that one did not fall. One of the rare shots that didn't seem to go for Helix tonight. And that's your final. Helix 76, Bahala 55. Bahala is going to fall to 0-1 in Grossmont Hills League play, but they got a lot of games left, so we're not going to worry about it right now. They learned something tonight. Coach Robert Wilson, Athletic Director Robert Wilson, what are your some of your closing thoughts before we hear from some of our statisticians? Well, you know, I think that we need to, to take what we uh, what we learned from this game and, and, and know that, you know, the high percentage shot is, is going to win you some games, but it can also lose wins just like, like it did tonight. Um, you, you know that you played a good Helix team. Helix is going to be, you know, they're, they're picked to win the league for, for a reason. They're, they're quick, they're strong, they're, 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 they're big. And um, so so know that and, and learn from the mistakes. And I, I think I think they can find a way to, to still be competitive in this league. And, and, you know, we get these guys again over at their place. Hopefully we've learned a few things uh, along the way and take another shot at them in a couple weeks. Well, Robert, we really appreciate you. Uh, my, my, my voice really appreciates you coming in here and adding some great insight to this game tonight and uh, making this broadcast probably a lot more bearable to the people at home. We thank you, and we'll, we'll see you probably often, frequently, I would think, during our uh, webcast season. And yep. speaking of webcast season, we'll be right back here on Monday. Uh, with Rancho Bernardo comes in, so we'll be live. I think that's a seven o'clock start. Uh, seven o'clock start. Uh, you have to check our listings. Unfortunately, our play on sports site, everything's on Eastern time zone. Just subtract three hours and you should be fine. Uh, but we'll be back Monday. Robert, thanks so much and have a good weekend. Yep, you too, sir. Stay, stay warm. Uh, stay warm. It's going to be a cold one. That's right. Absolutely warm. Or we've got to stay warm. All right, I think we're going to hear right now from maybe Tyler Roy. We're going to hear from from Ode Youssef. Ode Youssef is going to get us caught up with all the, the totals. Ode, what do you got for us? Uh, playing in the second half for uh, Valhalla Helix, obviously um, Valhalla had some momentum in the first uh, first half and you know played a great game. Then they kind of went downside from there. And uh, leading scorer in the uh, excuse me, leading scorer in the second half for Helix was Wilson, who uh, kind of uh, went insane, as my other statistician said it. And um, Scored 21 points in the second half with nine points in the first half, 30 points total in the game. Uh, you also saw a lot from Chandler and uh, Mitchell and Young, you know, who did uh, real, really great things in the second half, leading their team to victory. Then you also saw um, on Valhalla's side, <coughs> excuse me, L Lazoya was uh, scored five points in the second half, and then you had uh, Havard and Fukuri each contributing to the uh, second half totals for uh, Valhalla. Gazelle, um, in terms of fouls, uh, got five and was fouled out. Uh, and that was a problem towards the end of the game for Valhalla and contributed uh, 
somewhat to their loss. You know, uh, Helix was shooting pretty good at the at the line and played a role. Well, absolutely, and, and Ode, thank you so much for those stats. Uh, probably a little bit of disappointing evening tonight here for the, the guys' side. Uh, they they had high spirits that they could probably upset here Helix in this opener, but they'll get another chance at him. Uh, as for uh, the opening of tonight, the girls uh, shocked the world tonight and upset Helix in girls basketball play. First time since 2003, uh, so 10 years now since Bahala was successful in beating Helix's girls program. So hats off to Coach LaSalle and the girls. Thank you so much for listening to tonight's webcast. Uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed it. I guess uh, Tyler Roy is going to wow us some more statistics that somehow we managed to miss. What do you got for us, Tyler? Well, uh, for Valhalla, we were 8 for 25 on the shooting outside the, or just shooting pretty much. We made, in the second, in the first half, we made none of our free throws. And that was, there was, we were 0 for 9. That was harsh. But in the second half, we made 8 of our 9, which was a little bit better look. In both, uh, in both halves, we were over 10 outside the three-point line, and we made less than half of them each time. Yeah, so obviously shooting percentage not, not our strong suit tonight, and it's going to have to get a lot better. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Uh, the Helix team was very focused on scoring in the paint more than shooting outside the line. They only had, in the entire game, nine attempts outside the three-point line. And they were pretty efficient inside the paint, making it a lot really hard for Valhalla to catch up. Absolutely. I think that's probably the theme of tonight. But thanks again, Tyler, for your wonderful stats. Thank you for watching uh, tonight's game. Maybe watch both games. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your family. We're going to be broadcasting a lot of events here uh, this year on Orange Nation TV, bringing you top-notch coverage of high school athletics and high school activities. On behalf of Orange Nation, on behalf of Valhalla High School, uh, we 